Hey people, it is Sunday, March the 27th, and the time is 1.06 in the afternoon, and it's currently minus 6 degrees Celsius, but feeling more like minus 16, I think, with the wind chill. It's bitterly cold. The wind is brutal right now, and winter has returned, at least for today. As you can see, we had more snowfall. This was a very unpleasant surprise for me today when I looked out the window after waking up. So I thought we were done with this, although I wasn't fully expecting it to be gone for good, because I know better than that. And it kind of sucks to be right <laughs> when I thought to myself, winter will make one more appearance at least before spring really takes hold. But let this be the last hurrah. But I've said that before, haven't I? So anyway, I'm here on Dundas Street West at the far western end of the Junction neighborhood, which is also referred to as Little Malta. And I'm here at Runnymede. So I'm going to head south here. I just did a walk through the Junction. And I think I'll head south down to Annette Street and do a walk along Annette Street because it's a very attractive street in its own right. I have walked along parts of Annette Street in previous videos, but I don't think I've walked the more easterly portion east of Runnymede before in a video. I walked the stretch between Jane and Runnymede, I believe. So as you can see, the snow is not really much, a few centimeters at most, not even, maybe one or two centimeters, so this is nothing to worry about. It'll be gone probably within the next day or two, and the temperatures will be heading back up into the teens again by the middle of the coming week. So these are some very nice established residential neighborhoods here, going back at least to the early 20th century. Very sought after neighborhood, especially since the junction became a popular area for young professionals. Lots of trendy restaurants and shops and bars can be found on Dundas Street West. And right away, walking in this direction is much better. The wind is not brutally blasting straight into my face. Now Runnymede Road will take us down to Blue West Village. And I recently did a walk through that area. It's also known as Little Ukraine.
I think in that street is the next major intersection. And that is mainly residential, but it does have some small sections of commercial storefronts. Although it's not continuous, it's kind of gappy in nature. But it's a very charming street. It has that sort of just the right mix of urban, but not downtown, but streetcar suburb, I suppose you could say, level of urbanism, very walkable. Lots of traditional old school corner stores could be found, still be found in the neighborhood, which is something that is dying out, unfortunately. As you can see, all four corners of the intersection of Annette and Runnymede have commercial buildings. Shorma boys. The storefronts continue on this side. This one is out of business. That's too bad. You'll find lots of these almost hidden away little commercial enclaves in neighborhoods of this vintage throughout old Toronto. And although these are rather modest homes, some of them are quite sizable, don't get me wrong, but they're not mansions by any means, and they'll set you back a cool two million in some cases.
And the next street will come to an end at Dundas Street West as it curves to the south. After passing through the Junction neighborhood. And it's much, much better walking in this direction. <laughs> My previous video I recorded through the junction. I was walking in the opposite direction and it was a continuous assault on my face with bitter cold wind. Which does not make for a very pleasant experience. Even talking while recording with freezing wind in your face can be a bit difficult. Words do not like to come out properly. There's the Community Recreation Center. Pretty posh looking houses up in that direction. There's a beautiful old school building, Annette Street Public School. And I see another interesting building over here, the Clover School. And off in the distance there, you can see Dundas Street West in the Junction neighborhood.
This is technically still the Junction neighborhood. This is just not the the main street. Do you know what's really lost for you guys? No, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that street offhand. <laughs> Here's another old convenience store. This one still has merchandise. It looks like it's closed though at the moment. Espresso bar. Looks like this whole building is either being demolished or gutted. Perhaps they're leaving the facade up as part of a new development. I mean, the crane behind it obviously indicates a new, probably mid rise residential building. And I would imagine that they're going to retain this old historic facade. And also the old church next door, too. I suppose they're all part of the same church. Yeah, they're connected together as one structure. I'll have to look up some renderings of this project to see what the final product will look like. Fifteen spectacular residences. So they must be quite luxurious to only have fifteen units in this new building. And this is High Park Avenue. This is to the South Heroes High Park itself. What a wide street this is here. This is almost as wide as Palmerston Boulevard, or maybe even wider than Palmerston Boulevard. This church dates from 1888, with an addition added in 1906. Here's another look at that other old church.
Man, this is the neighborhood of big old churches, apparently. Oh, look at this one. Masonic Temple building. Yeah, that looks like a library building. Yes, it is. And that street branch, of the Toronto Public Library. And this is now lofts. Wow. That would be quite the place to live. Victoria Lofts. This was once a separate town from the city of Toronto called West Toronto with Dundas Street up ahead being the main commercial street. I would imagine the rents in that place are astronomical. And wow, an unexpected sighting of the CN Tower. I was not expecting that at all. So we were quite far from downtown, obviously. The tower looks <laughs> very small and far away. Here's Keel and Annette, and the main intersection of the commercial heart of the junction is just up ahead there at Dundas and Keel. And yes, this is the very first time I've actually walked along these parts of Annette Street. Not just in a video, but for any reason.
some of these residential side streets are interesting enough to explore on their own. This one is quite intriguing with the way it sort of curves out of view. Here's an interesting little corner shop. Some very interesting looking houses. Unfortunately, that one has seen better days. This is a soap store. And I believe this is where Annette Street comes to an end. Here where DuPont Street and Dundant Street West meet up. So I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed the walk along Annette Street from Runnymede all the way down here to DuPont slash Dundas covering a part of a net that I've never before explored in any way and I found it quite enjoyable so I hope you did too and if so leave a comment below let me know your thoughts and be sure to like and share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos and if you'd like to support the channel there are links in the description where you can do so via PayPal and via my merch store and you can also find me on Instagram under K Continuum. So thanks for watching and be sure to keep checking back because as always, I will continue.